like you to go ahead and intro yourself, introduce yourself, and talk about what you would like to discuss. Okay, I'm Edward Spencer, uh, MD, retired neurologist. Um, I'd like to give my uh, credentials, so to speak. I was a graduate of Stanford University, Yale University Medical School, with a residency program in uh, neurology uh, at the University of California. So, since 1996, I have uh, devoted a lot of time trying to understand why the world is such a total mess. And uh, it's just a lot of stuff, but it's clear that a lot of stuff hit us. Um, they are capable, some, something, somebody is capable of going up and redirecting comets fragments that still are in the, uh, 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 orbiting in the, in the torrid stream. And that I and the end game, you know, the stack them and pack them, get them off the land, the Chinese ghost system, uh, that you have uh, these so now what, So now what uh, you're talking about when you say the Chinese ghost system, okay, we've the, the, been watching ghost the ghost cities now for quite a number of years. And what we now know is that the military in China is going to the uh, rural country farmland uh, with guns and forcing the farmers to go and occupy those ghost cities. Target. And they target, target them. And they're committing suicide. They don't want to go. They're having to put uh, restraints such as suicide nets and so forth. And the, the rules for living in the cities are very strenuous. Uh, you cannot work over the age of 50 or 55 work is then no longer available for you and your family has to take care of you. So what we recently discovered is some of these farmers then are returning back to their farm farms and finding that they've been leveled. So where they came from was utterly it's genocide, genocide of the human species. That's exactly what's happening. So you're talking about the bigger picture and where you think this big event moving us into these electrified, uh, condensed uh, living conditions that we as people are not able to emotionally survive or function in with increased frequencies. And we're going to be bombarded by stuff from space. They can knock off most of us and over, well, make a huge dent over the weekend, uh, over a weekend, and then there will be uh, no growing for five years, and then we can put back in the bottle. So, so, so you're thinking then that the Wildlands Project, which is basically looking at the map, for example, of the United States that Dr. Michael Coffin put together a number of years back, the reason and purpose for consolidating us in these human settlement zones is so that then we're imprisoned, uh, they're eliminating cars, which is what they're doing. We're now seeing ads saying, ditch your gas guzzler. They're moving everything over to bikes and walking paths and uh, electric vehicles. And we know that they're eliminating petroleum now. It was always presumably fossil fuel. It was never fossil fuel, but now they're saying we're running out. So you're saying when we're condensed in these cities, various cities all over the globe, then yes, like they do for crowd control with some of the systems that they already use to... Uh, for example, we discovered Operation Crimson Mist that was used uh, in the mid-90s in Central Africa where they used microwaves to fly over the Hutu and the Tutsi tribes and they beamed the frequencies on the Hutus and they literally slaughtered the Tutsis. That was that huge Rwanda genocide. So you're saying something like that then? Yeah, I mean, not all these. When we're in de these dense populated zones. Yeah, by way electronically and also with stuff from space. And a woman who has been uh, abducted talked about, she seemed, she said, they seem to be saying that they were preparing for an asteroid hit. So you see, there are multiple ways we've been put, we've been put in a position we're not doing anything, we're not growing anything and we get splattered by things from space, and then there's no growing anywhere, no how. And, they, I, and I should say, okay, there are huge underground cities already in existence, 
under ocean floor cities in existence. And I'm saying to humans, if you want to survive, if you want to survive as a species and go forward to the brilliance that we can accomplish, you gotta, you got to wake up and you got to talk to each other and you got to fight. You have to pull out the love and use it. And so how is it that we best fight, Dr. Ed? They've got the uh, interconnected underground cities with bullet trains. They're fully stocked. We know that. Um, there have been many books written. Many people have gone down into the underground yeah. um, cities. So when you say fight, other than trying to break people out of the fake reality, which is I know what you've been trying to do, certainly what we've been trying to do now for a number of years, how, how else? I mean, we've got to, to create the awareness. Is that the fight? The and that's the fight. Is that is the us? fight, it is to create the awareness and, the, and, and to ask each other to help. So when, when we ask each other to help, because I, I certainly have a lot of questions for, from people when I present the documents, and they're grim, they're bleak. And people say, well, what do we do? And certainly we know that we need water. We know that we have primary water, so we're certainly encouraging people, along with Paul Power from the Primary Water Institute, to get to a good, solid, clean water source. What other things would you recommend? That you know, I always like T-shirts. People do to create T-shirts with messages on it. I think this is the time to do that. It's so not going to, you know. Talk to people. Stamping our money. I know many people stamp their money with stamps. We have to do what we can. And, and I think that the, and the main thing is to realize that all of the humans, the apparent humans or psychopathic, that are, are, are against us are under the employment, are being controlled by a non-human species. So, you know, you, everyone sort of looks, oh, he's a banker, he's that. One has to develop a major contempt for the turncoats who are. This is, I think, the major psychological thing. Well, I would ask you this then, because we know that um, the mind control aspects of the frequencies is really literally the psychotronics are taking over people's ability for free will. How, how is that potentially what's happening to the psychopaths? Well, I'm sure that is. But if you build a cell tower, you can knock down a cell tower. So, I mean, I, it, this is going to be... Um, this, the, the, That's the we kind don't of have the answer. Being in. We, we have to say, the, 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 you get up in the morning, you say, I'm alive, I know how to love, I want to go to the brilliant future that my species can communicate. I'm working for the human species, and um, it's, it's going to be a, a change of the mindset of the few and then the many, because I don't think this is irre irreversible. It's, it's an incredible thing, but I don't think it's irreversible. So... It's interesting that this came out today, and I, I watched it. Uh, I'll put the link in the description. But uh, I've been wanting to do this video a few days now. And um, that came out, and I thought that would be a great intro to what... The pace of the saying everything I wanted to put in the video. Um, what you're looking now is a, a search armored vehicle trains in the U.S. I've been following this. It's about five years now, uh, people reporting that they're seeing these convoys of military vehicles uh, being shipped all throughout the U.S. And um, if you look through, you see some of these videos. Some people put co compilation videos of, uh, so you can see the progress. But in every corner of the U.S., there's these long trains that go on for 10 minutes or so full of military vehicles and they're all over the place now some of them was marked UN some of most of them were unmarked um, apparently it's happening in other countries too but I heard some interviews on the news and people were like well these vehicles are going to they're, they're 
recycled military vehicles going to police departments. Um, some of them are just there for FEMA in case of a disaster, disaster uh, preparedness or resp disaster response. Uh, I've come up with another conclusion. Uh, <laughs> let's see. From another, well, let's see. She mentioned bunkers, underground bunkers. It is, there's an underground map. Uh, apparently, tunnels going from New Mexico to California to Montana and all the way to New York. Um, there's also the oil pipeline. That's They say the pipeline is to get the oil from Texas to Canada, but I think the pipeline is there to feed the, tu the, the tunnel, the military, the tunnels. Whatever's in the tunnels, they're using the oil from pipeline from Texas to Canada to feed fuel those uh, locations, probably for generators. Um, here's a report on the Telehub. It says uh, armored military vehicles by the thousands being relocated to underground bunkers as combat-ready troops train for coming civil unrest as dated uh, March 13th, 2015. Uh, soldiers in full combat gear. Actually, I've heard of a few local news reports when they had these small towns outside of major uh, cities where there's been quote-unquote uh, military training exercises, right? Um which I believe is just a cover because a week later these places have been hit with fires and floods and it's just I can't say for sure but it's just a little uh, suspicious or should I say I don't believe in too many coincidences you have a, a military a planned military training, and they're there for a weekend, and then the next week, the, the that city experienced some major disaster. Um, something is not being said. But here we got, let's see what they say. Four, nearly 40 U.S. Army soldiers wielding training rifles in the Texarkana Regional Airport perimeter. Um... I guess this is what we see uh, these pictures of these military installations from Google Maps. That's just one instance, but here's what concerns me. This is the ACU, uh, ACLU, uh, what does that stand for? I forget, the uh, Civil League something. What does that stand for? The American Civil League something? Uh, drawing a blank. Uh, American Civil Liberties Union. They have this uh, report of the Constitution in the 100-mile border zone. So, it's saying, they're saying, not them, but it has been said that the border, the Constitution <laughs> allows them to protect, to protect the borders the Constitution allows the government to protect the borders. <sighs> Without the Constitution? Is something nonsense they saying like that? Um, so they could, they, they're saying that from 100 miles inland from the borders, that they could be possibly Constitution-free zones. 
and this is how they justified putting border border checkpoints not at the border but up to a hundred miles inland away from the border border checkpoints now I've been through a few of these I tried to escape them but once you get in that area uh, that range a hundred miles from the border you're going to get caught in them and interesting enough they have the dog they pull everybody over they have the dog sniffing your vehicle uh, they have guards pretending to look in and do an inspection all that is uh, just a dog and pony show because you run you're driving through before you even get to the guards you're driving through a series of cameras which is like 20 cameras that scan your car and two of them are x-ray cameras or x-ray scanners and so when I went through the checkpoint, I was like, hey, uh, those x-ray scanners? And he came up and got close. and was like, who do you work for? What do you do? Who do you work for? That kind of nonsense. And he admitted that they were x-ray scanners. So I was like, yeah, well, the dog is just a pet, right? And pretty much because I saw the way he was playing with the dog. The dog was a puppy and had no clue what they was trying to get it to do. Um, so this talks about the problem. The Fourth Amendment of the U.S. Constitution protects Americans from random and arbitrary stops and searches. According to the government, however, these basic constitutional principles do not apply fully at our borders. For example, at border crossings, also called ports of entry, federal authorities do not need a warrant or even suspicion of wrongdoing to justify conducting what courts have called a routine search such as searching luggage or a vehicle. Even in places far removed from the border, uh, deep into the interior parts of the country, immigration officials enjoy broad, though not limitless, power. Uh, specifically, federal revelation, regulations give U.S. Customs and Border Protection Authority, uh, CPB, another three-letter an acronym, uh, CIA, uh, NSA, TSA, now we got CBP, is getting out of control, is out of control. We are not waiting for a police state. We have been in the police state for about 50 years now, and it just gets getting worse and worse. Um, actually, we've probably been in the police state since World War One, probably. Um... In this 100-mile zone, Border Patrol agents have certain additional authorities. Border Patrol agents have certain additional authorities. For instance, Border Patrol can't operate immigration checkpoints. Border Patrol, nevertheless, cannot pull anyone over without reasonable suspicion of an immigration violation or crime. Reasonable suspicion is more than just a hunch. Uh, Border Patrol cannot search vehicles in a 100-mile zone without a warrant or probable cause. Um, but, as like you said, they're saying that if they say it's national security or whatever, in practice, Border Patrol agents routinely ignore or misunderstand the limits of their legal authority in the course of individual stops, resulting in violations of the constitutional rights of innocent people. These problems are compounded in by inadequate training, which they train them to do what they want them to do, so that's not even a question of training. I don't know why we're trying to, trying to push this training issue. It's not a training issue. It goes beyond these people. These people are not responsible. They're doing what they're told to do. A lack of oversight by CBS, uh, CBP, and the U.S. Department of Homeland Security. It's not these people. It's the higher-ups. These people, who, whoever pays them, whoever put these border checkpoints in the areas that they are in, those are the people doing this. But they trying to get us to look the other way and look at the people doing it. Oh, they're just not... They just mistrained, and that's just nonsense. Here's the other thing. A hundred miles inland from the border, 
much of the U.S. population affected. Many people think that the border-related policies only impact people living in towns, border towns like El Paso and San Diego. The reality is that the Border Patrol's interior enforcement operation encroached deep into and across the United States, affecting the majority of Americans. Roughly two-thirds of the United States population live within the 100-mile zone that is within 100 miles of the U.S. land or coastal border. That's about 200 million people. Connecticut, Delaware, Florida, Hawaii, Maine, Massachusetts, New Jersey, New Hampshire, New York, Rhode Island, and Vermont lie entirely or almost entirely within this area. Nine of the ten largest U.S. metropolitan areas are determined by the 2010 census also fall within the zone. Nine of the ten largest metropolitan areas falls into this zone. New York, Los Angeles, Chicago, Houston, Philadelphia, Phoenix, San Antonio, San Diego, San Jose. So, no, look at all of Florida, Texas, all of half, more than half of California, more than half of uh, Oregon, all of Northeast, basically, even even Pennsylvania, nearly all of Pennsylvania. This is crazy. Let me see if we get a bigger picture of that. No. Yes, this is crazy. So, border checkpoints is where these, uh, uh, and they got us surrounded, they got us surrounded, most of us fall in there, this is probably where all this military equipment is headed, or sits, because it has already been imported, transported, now on top of that, FEMA camps. This is from a 2009 article, but you can find some newer ones. This is one with this map of all the known as of 2009. They're way more now. Now these consume. These include uh, WalMarts and certain malls that are designated as FEMA location. I'm not sure if they included the prisons that are that are already open. Um, uh, see what he has to say. It says the ruling elite is about to pull the velvet glove off the iron fist and are developing all the necessary pieces they need to complete tyranny. After the economic collapse and probable engineered pandemic, they will need camps for dissidents and a surveillance grid for the masses. It says the government has already prepared the military under civilian inmate labor program to run detention facilities. Um, homeless people have been transferred to these places during those last hurricanes that hit uh, Florida and Texas. And all the way up, I hear a lot of people, homeless people are disappearing in uh, Atlanta, Georgia, other places. They're all disappearing, and actually we know, we have video evidence that they were transported to some of these uh, FEMA locations. Now, they mentioned China. They mentioned China. It's something you need to know about China. Uh, they said the go cities in China, right? Re-education through labor. There's an article here. Uh, see the references with the references points how ch challenge to China how Taiwan abolishes version of re-education through labor dated 2013 um, got a lot of references here at the bottom for those who think Wikipedia is a source the government says it will reform a system of labor camps the economic ec economist uh, January 12, 2013. But I'm just going to read what this says. Uh, the re-education through labor system 
was a system of administrative detention of the People's Republic of China. The system was active from 1957 to 2013 and was used to detain persons accused of minor crimes such as petty theft, prostitution, and trafficking illegal drugs, as well as political dissidents, petitioners, and Falun Gong adherents. It was separate from the much larger uh, prison labor camps. <laughs> so, this has been operating a long time, and in addition to the other prison labor camps. Um, sentencing under re-education through labor was typically for one to three years, with the possibility of an additional one-year extension, they were issued as a form of administrative punishment by police rather than the, through the judicial system. They were issued as a form of administrative punishment by police rather than through the judicial system. So, if they're going to suspend the Constitution giving the police the power, the Border Patrol police then they can arrest you and put you in these uh, these uh, emergency um, labor camps. <laughs> but back to China. Um, while incarcerated, detainees were often subject to some of the political, some form of political education. Uh, estimate on the numbers of detainees on any given year range from 190,000 to 2 million in a year. Uh, the general refers to prisons, prison farms, and labor camps. Uh, so, yeah, I'll put the link in the description for that. Now, that's we know that's so that's been going on for quite a while, but they talked about the ghost cities in that video I opened up with, and here's an article on the ghost cities from the New York Times. It says China's great uprooting, moving 250 million into cities. This is June 15, 2013. Beijing, China is pushing ahead with a sweeping plan to move 250 million rural residents into newly constructed towns and cities over the next dozen years. Now, they, these ghost cities, basically when there's a housing, the, housing, housing, the housing crisis of 2008 hit, uh, people were pulling out their money from the U.S., but some people were investing in the U.S. Um, you know, crises make people get, attract different types of investors. So, people, different investors respond differently. But a lot of people switch their money to, across the globe, or maybe these hedge funds, sent their money to China to build these cities. They are we're going to invest in China now. So they built all these cities, like cities that did not exist. They went to rural China and put up these massive skyscrapers and buildings and malls and everything else. And no one lives in them, even today. A lot of them are empty. But uh, what they have here is a 10-year plan or a 12-year plan. It says China is pushing ahead with the plan to move... 250 million rural residents into newly construction, constructed towns and cities over the next dozen years. A transformative event that could set off a new wave of growth or saddle the country with problems for the generations to come. The government, often by fiat, is replacing small rural homes with high rises, paving over vast wharfs swaths of farmland, paving over vast swaths of farmland and drastically altering the lives of rural dwellers. So large is the scale that the number of the brand new Chinese city dwellers will approach the total urban population of the United States in a country already busting, bursting with megacities. So, 
as she was mentioning, you got these people who lived in the rural country. A lot of them just moved out there. Some have been out there for ages. They got accustomed to the way of life. They are not with the capitalism. They're not with working and slaving for someone else. Uh, they like taking care of their own. And they're being forced out and to live into the cities where they can be controlled. Now basically, the point of this video, the US, United States, from what I can understand, what I determined from the history of the, the, the Civil War, is that the 13 colonies, they went and took the slave and freed the slaves of the 13 colonies so that they can spread them out throughout the whole North well, whatever section of North America this is, and make the whole thing a plantation. <laughs> and now they got all the people off the rural areas. They, 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 all the original people off the rural areas. They enforced into cities. Now they're going to get those people who, who did that into the cities, where everybody's being controlled. All the roads are there. All the roads they built, all the train tracks, is just to control the population. They they deforested the land. Um, they 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 killed. Well, by extension, the most of the wildlife is gone because of the tra terraforming of the land. Um, we got a lot of work ahead of us, man. This is this is serious. Uh, so they want us into the, they moved us, they made the whole United States territory a plantation. And now they want to create these mega cities where they just basically get all their cattle into the pens. Where they can, they won't, they easier controlled. Basically is what's happening. Um... This is what we up against. <laughs> I started out the video with with that recording that happened today, because um, I believe, like that gentleman believed, that it's not irreversible. There's a lot of work for us to do, but it's not irreversible. We can make the change. We can be the change. But we're running out of time, so we better start now.